section, Mr. David Pritchard. Hello, everybody. Hello. Hello. Uh, I thought, given the nature of this evening, it would be appropriate to start with a joke. <laughs> it's not a very good joke. Um, but hopefully it'll make the rest of my stuff look a bit funnier in comparison. I should mention before I start this, I'm a biologist. It's kind of... it's important. <laughs> what does being a biologist and being an airline pilot have in common? We don't know. <laughs> well, I'll tell you. Both jobs have their ups and downs. <laughs> yeah, it's fucking awful. <laughs> But the point of it is that I get to now talk about how my job has things that I like, and it has some things that I like, yeah, it's my name, uh, considerably <laughs> less. Uh, so what do I like? Um, I like my research. I work in spatial memory, um, how animals in the wild uh, remember important locations and find their way back to them. Now, many species need to do this to survive, and since they're not dead, uh, presumably they've gotten pretty good at it. Uh, <laughs> So I work in the Rocky Mountains, uh, the Canadian Rocky Mountains, actually, the uh, politer, pro-recycling neighbour to the American Rocky Mountains. <laughs> and it's pretty pleasant. It both looks and smells like the aftershot of an air freshener commercial. Um, I go there because I work on wild hummingbirds. Now, hummingbirds are to spatial memory what Simon Cowell is to producing bland, generic bullshit. <laughs> they, are, they are pretty good at it. And a hummingbird can remember the location of every flower in its territory, as well as how long it takes that flower to refill after it has visited it. And this means that they're able to not, you know, fuck up and visit only empty flowers and subsequently die. <laughs> <clears throat> now, to return to a flower's location, hummingbirds have something a little bit like a GPS in the brain that takes in information from the surroundings and is able to tell them when they have reached their destination. Um, <clears throat> I'm interested in quite what information they do, and I do experiments in the wild um, to try and figure out what kind of information hummingbirds used to do this. It's all very exciting, it's all very cool, it's all very lovely, and I quite like this bit of my job. All right, so what's the downside? Hummingbirds are dicks. <laughs> And I don't mean in a cute way, I don't mean in a funny way, I mean behind their beady little eyes, hummingbirds are sadistic, violent fuckers. <laughs> Disney has lied to you. <laughs> the media has lied to you. Hummingbirds are not your lovable little forest friends, they're not manifestations of the beauty and fragility of nature, they are sugar crazed, flashy little hooligans with a needle for a face. <laughs> And they can hover. They are hovering, flashing little hooligans with a needle for a face. Like the unholy cross between a velociraptor and a helicopter. <laughs> and that's what people don't understand about hummingbirds. Hummingbirds are scary. I, in fact, hummingbirds are the worst kind of scary. When uh, your a hummingbird gets angry at you and it gets up in your business, giving it all that, right? You feel two emotions in quick succession. First, you feel an intense physical intimidation. <laughs> Second, almost immediately afterwards, you feel ashamed at having been physically intimidated <laughs> by a bird that weighed three grams, which for reference is roughly the weight of a 2p coin. But it shouldn't be embarrassing. Hummingbirds are vicious little bastards. Did you know that hummingbirds try and stab each other with their bills? They do. Seriously. You don't know that because hummingbirds have fantastic PR. Even the name, hummingbirds, right? It's very chill, it's very laid back, it's very folk music y, very Simon and Garfunkel, very much the fundamental opposite of something that would stab someone with its face. <laughs> they need another name Stabbing Birds. Uh, it would be good, it'd be a little bit more appropriate because nothing about these little bastards is laid back. Now, they migrate from Mexico, uh, where they're called colibris, or devil birds, uh, <laughs> up to Canada, through the western United States, where they leave a trail of carnage in their wake. <laughs> and they go to Canada for one reason, and that is to get laid. And they go about it the same way they go about everything. Like fucking jerks. <laughs> now, let's imagine, let's imagine I was single, which I'm not, and I'm in a club, which I almost certainly wouldn't be. <clears throat> and I was getting my groove on. 
just like this, <laughs> right? And I saw this girl who's interested in me, so I make eye contact. I maybe I would make some polite conversation. Maybe I would smile. Maybe I would introduce myself. What I wouldn't do is I would not run full sprint at her, screaming about how many push-ups I can do. <laughs> yeah, that is fundamentally the hummingbird approach to romance. <laughs> basically indistinguishable from repelling an aggressive territorial intruder, but with a slightly increased chance of sex at the end of it. <laughs> but look, maybe if I calm down a second, maybe I'm being unfair to these irredeemably sociopathic little bastards. Maybe, maybe I need to look inside at my liberal conscience and ask myself, why are these angry little shits so angry? I mean, are they mean to me? Because they have had a tough upbringing? Oh, hell no! <laughs> Hummingbirds hatch from tic-tac-sized eggs in a nest made of moss and spider silk. That is fucking enchanting. <laughs> <laughs> that is not a hard knock life. So what else? Napoleon complex? Maybe. I'm pretty sure that sugar can't be good for their mood levels. But if I was to ask myself, and be really brutally honest, if I was to ask myself what has two thumbs and is probably responsible for pissing off hummingbirds on a regular basis, I'm going to have to say, this guy. <laughs> Don't get me wrong, hummingbirds are sp nasty, spiteful little arseholes. That's just who they are. When your heart beats a thousand times a minute, it has no time for compassion. <laughs> but those experiments I mentioned at the beginning, well, they are kind of carefully designed to piss off hummingbirds. I move flowers around, I make landmarks bigger, make landmarks smaller, take landmarks away, all to deliberately trick that hummingbird GPS into making them think they have reached their destination. When they have not reached their destination, they are nowhere near their destination. And that's enough to piss anyone off, or at least make them slightly grumpy. And it's more than enough to push these borderline homicidal little bastards over the edge. So why do I do it? Why do I poke this sleeping bear? Why? Do I make things actively worse for both myself and these hummingbirds? I mean, if you lived with an angry control freak, you wouldn't just move their milk around to see whether they noticed. I mean, what kind of person would do that? I'll tell you what kind of person would do that. Someone who really wants to know how angry control freaks remember the location of milk. That's what kind of person would do that. And I know that because I am that person. I like to know how things work. I want to understand how animals in the wild do the things that they do. And I want to know how they remember the locations of things. And that's why I am stuck with hummingbirds. Because every little piece of their nasty cells, every element that makes them such colossal wankers, at least in a figurative sense, um, <clears throat> is exactly why they would make such fantastic subjects for studying spatial memory in the wild. They are pig-headedly stubborn which means they will keep coming back to my experiments even when I move shit about. <laughs> they are incredibly aggressive, trying to chase and kill every other hummingbird that comes into their territory. That means I'm able to work on a single individual over multiple days. Hummingbirds are dicks, but because hummingbirds are dicks, I can do my science. And I suppose that's what it comes to. I may have been a little bit unfair to them earlier, saying that they were the downside of being a biologist, because to be honest, hummingbirds and me, we are wedded together. We are wedded deep. In a highly dysfunctional, disastrously dysfunctional interspecies marriage of convenience. Thank you very much. <laughs>